Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, check completeness of a binary tree. We're given the root of a binary tree and we just want to check if it is a complete binary tree, which by definition is a tree where every single level in the tree is completely full except possibly the last level. If the last level is not full, then it has to be filled from left to right. So here you can see it does have a single missing node, but the missing node is all the way on the right side. So the existing nodes are filled in from the left side. Now suppose this node over here was missing, then it's not a complete binary tree because we have a node here, but we also have a node here. They're not filled from left to right. We have a missing one right here. Now, if we had all four nodes, then it is also a complete binary tree. So conceptually, this problem is pretty simple. By looking at it, it's pretty easy to tell if we have a complete binary tree or not. And algorithmically, we know there's not a ton of different algorithms we can run on a binary tree. Usually it's DFS, but the less common one is breadth first search. Which one do you think is going to be more useful in this case? Probably breadth first search, which is basically a level order traversal. We're going to traverse it level by level because that's probably what's going to allow us to know if the last level is filled from left to right. So suppose we have the same binary tree over here, well, structurally the same. The values are pretty much irrelevant, so I'm not even going to put them in here because they just serve as a distraction for us in this problem. As we're doing a breadth first search on this problem, we're going to have a queue data structure. This is going to be inside of our queue. We're going to pop this and then add its two children to the queue. And then we're going to pop the left child over here and then append its children to the queue. And then we're going to pop this next guy over here, append its children, it has one child here, and it has null over here. And then we're going to pop this guy and pop this guy and pop this guy and also append their children, which are going to be null. And then once we have a queue full of nulls, which is what's going to happen in this case, that's how our algorithm is going to terminate. But how do we know at the end is it a complete binary tree or not? Well, think about it like this. For the last level, we expect that eventually we will have some nulls. Either there's gonna be a null here, which is gonna be the case for this problem, or maybe this entire level is going to be full. We have a node over here, but then the last level is just gonna be full of nulls. So basically, when we reach our first null value, we expect that every other value we pop after that is also going to be null. That's how you know it's a complete binary tree, whether it's in the last level or whether it's in like the existing level. Maybe this node doesn't exist either. We have two null values over here. We expect there not to be a situation like this where there's an existing node here, but there's not a node here. We pop this guy, it's non-null. We pop this guy, it's non-null. We pop this, it's a null value. And then after that, we do not expect to see a non-null value over here. If we do, then it's not a complete binary tree. Now there's one last edge case you might be thinking about. What if we have a situation like this where yes, there's a null in this level, but what if this is not the last level? What if over here, this node also has a couple non-null children? Does the algorithm I just described still work for this tree? Let's test it out. Let's say we pop all of these and then we get to this level. We pop this, append its two children, pop this, append its two children, which are null, pop this, append its children, and then we get here, we pop it, we see, okay, it's a null value. Now we expect that everything we pop should also be null. And if it's not the case, that means this is not a complete binary tree. So next, we're going to pop these two. Notice how it's not null. So that means this is not a complete binary tree. So you can see that this pretty basic algorithm does work for pretty much every structure. It will tell us whether a tree is a complete binary tree or not. 
And since we're just doing a pretty basic breadth first search, the overall time complexity is going to be big O of N. That's also going to be the memory complexity in the worst case. So now let's code it up. So as with every breadth first search, you want to start with a Q. We're guaranteed that the root is going to be non-null, but that wouldn't matter the way I'm gonna code this up anyway, but I'm gonna initialize this Q with the root value. We have to pass in an array to initialize the Q. So next, we're going to run our breadth first search. While the Q is non-empty, we're going to pop from the queue. We pop from the left side because we're gonna be pushing to the right side. It's important to do it this way because we wanna traverse every level from left to right. So when we pop the node, we want to take the node's children and append them to the queue. So node.left and append node.right. But it's possible as we're appending children to the queue, that we end up appending a null value to the queue. It's also possible that the root could have been null. So before we try appending its children, we have to first make sure that the node itself is non-null. So let's make sure if the node is non-null, then we append its children. But what if the node is null? Remember, that's important because that's what's gonna tell us whether we have a complete binary tree or not. So when we do have a null node, then we're gonna run some different logic here. At this point, we expect every node that we pop to be null. So we're gonna say while Q, let's just do the same thing we kind of did up above here, except we're gonna do it slightly differently. We're gonna say Q pop left. We're also gonna call this node, but that's not really super important. But we wanna make sure that this thing that we're popping, and actually we don't even need to assign it to a variable, we're gonna check if this node that we just popped is non-null, then we have to return false because we were expecting everything to be null, but now we found a non-null node. That means this is not a complete binary tree, so we return false. Now, if we never execute this, meaning we never execute this false, we're definitely gonna execute this while loop, then our queue is gonna be empty. Then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna exit out of this loop as well. And then out here, we can go ahead and return true because we know we do have a complete binary tree. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient, even though the run times on leak code are random. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.